Uh, Kate, do you have somebody for me? Yeah, we've got Melissa Armo in the room. Melissa, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Where are you broadcasting from today? I live in Manhattan, New York City. Oh, what part of Manhattan? Right in Midtown, in the thick of it. <laughs> I used to live on 54th Street and uh, 1st Avenue. Oh, good for you. So that's probably walking distance from where you, you are now. Great neighborhood. Uh, I miss it. May go back to it someday. So well, uh, you go ahead and get your PowerPoint up there, Melissa. I'll give your introduction. Melissa Armo founded the Stock Swoosh LLC in December 2012. The Stock Swoosh LLC is an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. Uh, she was employed for several by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a securities trading career in 2008. A self-taught day trader, uh, day trader with over 10 years' experience. Melissa's specialty is trading strategy and focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. All right, well, you have until five minutes before the hour, and uh, uh, then we'll introduce our last batch of prizes uh, for the week. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself, and you have the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. It has been a very, very crazy day for markets. We fell today. And so this is this is very topical because we're going to talk about shorting. So if you shorted many stocks today or the overall market, and by market, I mean the SPY or the QQQs or even the diamonds, you made money today. So we're going to talk about how to short for fast profits this summer. Obviously, it's summer. When the weather's nice, people don't like to sit at their desk all day. But personally, I really don't like to day trade all day. I will be in options that I may be in during the day, but I'd like to be in and out quick and fast in my day trades. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I put on there when I'm going to be on television. And again, I do appear on every national news network. We've been talking about inflation for quite some time, a recession. It's a daily topic. And also, of course, the way the market has been selling off. Uh, so it's interesting because, again, regular everyday people do not trade the market for the most part. When they're watching TV, they just want to know and they're worried about the retirement accounts or this and that. People are talking about recession. How will that affect the market? Well, the reality is that the companies, the stocks that I trade, that you may trade as well, they report earnings four times a year. So we're getting into uh, July. July is in a couple of weeks when the next earnings season will begin and then companies will report their earnings for third quarter. So if companies think they're going to have not as good a production, not as good a profits, have to lay people off. That will be reflected in whatever they say in the earnings calls in July and August. So far this year, it's been a good time to trade because we've had a lot of volatility. And again, high inflation, the possibility of recession, rising interest rates, all of these things do affect the market because people are worried. They're up a lot of money because the market's been rallying up and 2021 was a very, very bullish year in the market. Whether you bought Tesla, like the speaker was talking about, or whether you bought the overall market, Things rallied so much last year, you could have bought every single dip and made money. You could have bought money in strong stocks, weak stocks, everything. The reality is that was a very uh, unusual year, okay? So that was an anomaly. It's not, it's not the case that you can always buy anything and make money. So I think traders were spoiled last year by going long. But the funny thing is, I have always preferred to short. Since I started trading about 14 years ago, I decided I like shorting as a niche because many traders prefer to go long. I do go long, I will go long, but I prefer to short, okay? 
So it's been very advantageous to short this year, but I did short last year, even when the market was bullish, okay? And again, I like to look at stocks and sometimes we do the market, but trading is a great summer job because of the fact that you can be in and out quick and done in a half an hour, an hour and a day. So the trades we did today, we're gonna to go over here. I plopped them in this lecture, the things that we did today that we shorted, we ran it out in the first half an hour of the day. So I'm doing the webinar here now, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, but I pretty much had my afternoon free from 10 to four because I was done. I was done very early today. And that's one of the reasons why trading is a nice summer job because you don't have to sit for six and a half hours all day. And I find that people that trade all day, even if they want to sit at their computer all day, which I do not, uh, which is one of the reasons I like doing television. It's something I can do after I'm done trading. People tend to give money back. They make money and then they give it right back. That's a disaster. Trading isn't one of these things where the more time you spend trading, the more trades that you take, the more money you will make. You make more money trading when you have more wins and increase your win ratio and then increase your size with your trading positions. It's the idea of getting really good at something, so good at it that you win more than you lose and you rarely lose. And then you can add size to your trades, whatever size accounts you have, whatever fits within the sizing of the size of your cash of your account, whether you do it as day trades or whether you do it as options, that's how you make more money. It's not about just trading for six and a half hours a day. Again, that's not something that I do. I run a live trading room. It's open every morning for a half an hour, an hour, 15 minutes if we're done. You know, whenever we're done, I shut it down and that's it. And I go on to the rest of my day. But if you're here, you're probably here for one reason, you want to make money, okay? And that is something that needs to be at the forefront of your mind every day when you trade, when you get up, why you're doing this. You have to be focused. You have one goal when you trade. One, it's to make money. Why it's great to know a lot of stuff about a lot of different things and read fundamentals and read all kinds of newsletters and watch what's happening on the CNBC and all, everything on TV, what people are saying. The reality is what's happening in the price of the market or the stock is going to determine what the position you take long or short and where you get in and where you get out. And if you're going to get the direction right, whether you make money. And again, the idea is to chunk it out. 500, 500, 500, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. You put together a week and a month and an entire year by trading accurately, consistently. It does not mean that you will never have a, a trade that loses. I have trades that lose, but I have more trades that win that lose. And so that's how I've been able to establish a business now for 10 years. And again, I've been trading for 14 years. And if anybody has any questions, you can plop them in the room and I'll see them. I'm not gonna go through every single trade in here. I put in all the stats. These are the day trade stats, not the options for the entire year so far this year for 2022. So we're basically almost halfway through the year. We're halfway through June, five and a half months. This is the results. This is risking an average risk of about $2,800 per trade. These are day trades. These are day trades on margin. We did the cues today and we did the spy and we shorted them and we were done a little after 10 o'clock this morning and we are gonna go over the trades. We did not do anything yesterday. We did not do anything Tuesday. We shorted the market Monday and Friday. And again, it's not like I look at the market every day to short, but the opportunities have been there. And so we've been taking advantage of those opportunities. And again, we're gonna talk about those trades here today. But training overall, before I get into the nitty gritty and charts and talk about things like that, Trading overall requires really a positive attitude. I find that this is difficult for people that have been attempting uh, to trade the market successfully for years, five years, 10 years, a long, long time, longer than I'm alive. People pay for classes or subscriptions. They don't learn. They're trading in the market. They're losing too. It all adds up. It, you know, No one wakes up and rolls out of bed the first day they decide they want to trade and is all of a sudden successful and never looks back. That's not realistic. It wasn't the case for me. It took me three years to figure out my system. And I did take a class when I started, again, a long time ago, 14 years ago. I did not learn how to make money in that class. I did learn an overall basic view of technical analysis, which was the foundation for developing my own system. So I found that valuable. And every class you take and anything that you learn, you can pick up things here or there, which can help you. But you've got to have a system that you use on a regular basis that is successful. And I think people jump around way too much, way too much futures, cryptocurrencies, this thing, that thing, whatever, because they, 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 they feel like they've got to look for the next best thing. If you get good at something and it works, you will have success. But you have to stay positive. Everyone has 
a point where they are trying to figure out what to do. It may take weeks, it may take months, it may take years till you find the right strategy or you create your own, which is of course what I did. It's not like I decided to do that when I first started. Again, I did take a class, but when I realized after that class that I didn't know how to you know, make money from that class, it didn't teach me how to make money. It was like a lot of stuff about uh, things that really wasn't any specific system. I realized that I had to figure something out that would work. And at the time, and even now, there's not much out there about gaps, which is what we're going to talk about today. The fast trades I do are in gaps. The market gap down today, NVIDIA gap down today, Tesla gap down today. Pretty much everything did with the market, or most stocks did. That created opportunity to short, okay? So know that if you're going through this process, know that if you've been trading for a while, you will have ups and downs. And the only way you're going to make it is if you have a positive attitude, because otherwise you're going to quit, you're going to give up, you're going to be negative, and that all works against you. While you need more than a positive attitude to be successful as a trader or investor, whichever your goal is here, or why you're here today, you need a system as well, but you still need a positive attitude too. And even if you know what to do, and even if you have a good system, and even if you have a good attitude, you might have a bad day, but you got to get back up on the horse tomorrow and do good the next day and move forward. And that's training. You know, even people that have been trading again for longer than I'm alive and have millions and millions and millions of dollars sometimes have bad days. Professional traders, institutional traders, they even sometimes have bad days. So you have to be able to look forward even when you have a bad day. And a positive attitude really helps you with that, okay? So in order to become successful, in my mind, you need a positive attitude and you also need a system and a niche. So what's my niche? My niche is I focus on shorting and I also focus on gaps and I focus on fast trains in the morning in the first 30 minutes of the day. So you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everyone does, why? because they don't know what to do. And for every winner, there's a loser. And so it's, you know, it's from the movie, The Wall Street, the Gordon Gecko, it's a zero sum game. This is one of these things where I'm not making, you know, knitting socks, you know, when I make money in the market today, I don't have a product like that I'm selling to someone on the street, like a sweater, and neither are you. You, you actually are pulling money from somebody else in the train that you're taking money from somebody, could be your next door neighbor. You don't know. This is an independent activity. You want to be right. The people that make the money or the people that are the winners, that's the side you want to be on. So in that sense, it's a tough industry because it's not really something that involves camaraderie. It's independent. And you have to look after yourself. Again, even if you come and you learn from me and I mentor you, you're the one pressing the button. You're the one sizing yourself and you're the one making the decisions to take the trade. So you have to realize what it is. It's set up as a system that a lot of people are going to lose. There's going to be more losers than winners. Once you understand that, once you can wrap your head around that concept, then you can move forward. The beautiful thing about the market is there's so much money in the market and so many participants in this type of environment of electronic trading. And again, I've been trading since, since 2008, but you know the electronic market has been around way longer than that. The fact is that there's so much volume in the market and so many people in there, you only need a tiny piece, a little sliver every day of one trade to make thousands of dollars on any given day or any given week. So you only need a dot of something. Someone's asking about shorting stocks in an IRA. You can buy a put. A put is a short. We will talk about a put that I called too in here as well. But in an IRA, you have to call and find out and talk to your place. So you have the IRA out, you should be allowed to buy a put. Okay. And we do that too. We do that too. All right. So let's talk about having a good system. You have to have a system. You have to follow it daily. If you don't have anything, you don't do anything. Like I said, we didn't do anything yesterday. Wasn't anything good. We didn't do anything. There was the rain announcement. Nobody knew what they were going to say. Half a point. It's 0.75. No one knew how they react. We gapped up yesterday. We fell. We rallied. We rallied. We fell. We didn't do anything yesterday, okay? You have to be focused. You have to know what you're looking for. I get up in the morning and I look at whatever's gapping and I take a look at it. Do I know where the market's gonna gap tomorrow morning? No, I don't know where it's gonna gap tomorrow morning. Could be up, could be down. There's something tonight that's reporting right now. We can look at if we have time, it's Adobe. That's reporting earnings right now after four o'clock and that's probably having some kind of big move. I don't know if it's up or down. But stocks gap for many reasons, could be economic data, could be with the market like today, could be earnings, could be 
an upgrade, a downgrade. So there's lots of gaps that happen, but not every gap is a good gap. So I create a system to actually evaluate the gap itself to determine if I want to short it, okay? But what I love about gaps is that they have momentum and they have moves and the moves happen quick and they happen fast, okay? So here's the chart of Apple. We didn't do this, but I plant them in here today because I wanna show you the gaps. I wanna show you what a gap is. And again, people love Apple. They just love it, love it, love it. So what happened here today? Stack closed here, this was yesterday, Thursday. Or no, that was yesterday was Wednesday, sorry. <laughs> yesterday, Wednesday, Apple closed here, roughly around 135-ish, boom. Open in the morning here, it's like around 132-ish and change and fell, dropped. I don't know where this closed. I plopped this in here a little bit before one o'clock. We fell, we fell later this afternoon. But anyways, you could have shorted Apple today. Now, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Again, I like to short, but there are all kinds of gaps. There are bullish gaps. There are bearish gaps, okay? So this closed here, this gap up. So a gap up is when the open is higher than the previous day's close. This was Tuesday to Wednesday. So from Wednesday to Thursday, we gapped down. We closed at one price here and opened at a lower price. This is a bearish gap that happened today. So there are bullish gaps, there are bearish gaps. And I actually do do both because if I don't see any good bearish gaps, then I may look at the bullish gaps and I may go long. Today, we're going to talk about shorting because I prefer to short because most of the days, the 200 plus trading days in a year, I do short, okay? Someone's saying Adobe's down. All right, there we go. I'm going to look at that tomorrow morning. I'll rate it in the morning. And again, I'll see where the market is. Adobe is a market stock. The market's probably lower today, no matter how it, tomorrow, no matter how it gaps. So to be honest with you, again, we'll, I'll look at the market in Adobe if we have time when we're done here. But anyways, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple. So what the complexity in the process is that I'm trying to find a gap that's going to have a big move and a fast move, okay? Fast money is good. One of the reasons that, again, we've had a good year this year is because of the volatility. The volatility is not something that scares me. The volatility is great. It means that we can get big moves. Traders make money with big moves. You got to have the direction right. But guess what? You have the direction right all the time anyways. You should know how you're playing something either way. But fast is good so you don't have to worry about when the Fed chairman is talking, when the president is talking, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. If you're in and out of something at 5, 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes in the morning, you don't care what happens in the afternoon at 2 o'clock or 12 o'clock or whatever happens when they're doing a White House press conference. So, you know, you, you just make the money, get the move, get out, you're done. You know, you don't, no one can predict all of these things that are going on in the world right now. Who could have ever predicted the, 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 where we'd be right now, the price of oil and everything else? No one. OK, you couldn't have predicted that going back eight, nine, 10 months ago. So doing the fast trades, getting the money in and getting out quick is actually, again, a benefit besides the fact that I don't want to sit and stare at charts all day for six and a half hours. But gaps move fast. They also have momentum. So let's take a look at the QQQs. So what happened in this today? We gapped down. Market closed here. This was Wednesday. Gap down. Open, fell, dropped. Boom. Again, the red bar depicts what? It depicts selling. So we had selling coming into the market today. And again, this is momentum to the downside. So you have selling, you have buyers that are selling, and then you have the shorts, okay? Because we shorted this. There were other people I'm sure that shorted the market today too. Again, let's go over what is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. I look at the daily chart and see the gap. You also can see the gap on any other time frame that you would like to see it. I look at the daily, but you can look at the 15 minute. You can look at the one. Stocks gap most every single day. I mean, it's so rare that Apple would close at 130.02 and then open the next day at 130.02. While theoretically it could, that's rare. So not every gap, though, is a good gap or what I call a golden gap. And that's the terminology I, I, I named my system and my class because it's like finding gold in the market when you find something that works. I didn't post the trading room yet from today on YouTube. I will. If you want to go follow me on YouTube, it's Stock Swish on YouTube. I will post it. In the room today was so certain, so certain. I said 100%, no chance of failure. The market falls today 100%. And I was right. So, I mean, when, when you get a good gap, it's like, you know, you got to do it, you stick with it, you follow it through, you get in and you get out. 
So I'm looking for the gaps that are predictable, predictable, okay? This isn't about predicting what's going to happen three months from now or four months from now or, you know, January 2023, okay? Active trading, and we're even the options, we're doing the weekly options. So I'm not doing options, like I'm not doing long-term leaps. Active trading is you're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen with inflation, recession, or anything right now. You are just looking to make money today and tomorrow and the next day and the next. Okay. It's active trading where you're chunking it out and you're pulling money out of the market on a regular basis for profit. Okay. And I think people forget that too when they're trading. And remember, I was talking about the fact that I find that shorting is a niche. Because most traders love to go long. People are talking already. And I know because I'm on TV with these people. When, when do we buy them out? When can we go out of the dip? When can we do this? Where are we going? When can we buy? It's like, why are you even worried about that right now? You should not be thinking about that at all. Why is anyone even thinking where they're going to go long? Anything. The market's falling. The momentum's to the downside. Okay, that's it. Don't worry about what's going to happen one week from now, one month from now, three months from now. That's very difficult to predict. And you don't know. And neither do I. OK, seeing Adobe or the market tomorrow morning when I roll out of bed at six o'clock in the morning, rate it, play it between 930 and 10 a.m. That's totally something that's doable and easily predictable once I rate it, because we're looking at a very short time frame in a minutia framework to do something to, to read the momentum and trade it. OK. Trying to predict what's going to happen and all other kinds of things that affect the market and stocks is, is just like, it's, a, it's, it's just a lost cause, okay? And why people want to do that because they're in swing trades or long-term trades, or they're worried about the retirement account. Quite frankly, if you have money in a retirement account and you're anywhere near retirement, you're in retirement right now, you should have met with someone long ago that was a financial advisor. I mean, I'm talking like February to get advice about what to do when we started selling off early this year. It's, it's a little late now to be questioning those things if you're actually in retirement with the drop off that we've had so far since January. <clears throat> I mean, the SPI made a brand new high on January 4th and the Qs didn't even make a new high at all this year. And I did say this, like I said it on Fox News, actually Memorial Day, it was on Memorial Day. I said, there is a chance. I said, I'm not 100%, but there is a chance that the market may not make a brand new all-time high again for the rest of the calendar year of 2022. And that will be shocking for people, shocking for people because the market's made so many brand new all-time highs going back so many years now. And you know that if you traded or you know that if you've had money in a 401k that people won't know what to do with themselves if that doesn't happen. While it is possible, possible that we could, it's, you know, I mean, the later it gets in the year and the farther down we go, that's very unlikely. And if it happens, it'll be towards the end of the year. Okay. Anyways, let's get back and look at the SPY, this gap too. So again, we did the SPY today. We did the Qs today. This closed here, this gap down, boom. Again, why do traders prefer to short and go long? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. I love shorting because the moves happen fast. It's fun. I like to do it. I found that's a niche for me and I'm very aggressive when I trade shorts. But I think the concept of buying is easy for people to understand. If you buy something at a dollar and it goes up to $2, you cannot wrap your head around the fact that the price went up and you made a buck. I know there's some types of trading accounts that people only can go long. So maybe that's why they like to do it too. But actually, if you can learn to short and short well, you will have a niche. And anything you can do to give yourself an edge to put you over the other people that are fighting for the same money in the market is actually something that you should consider. Because the fact is, again, everybody's after the same thing. Everybody's after the profit. So you want to get an edge. Here's Facebook. This was before it flipped and went meta. This is an old chart now uh, before it changed its name. I'm glad I have this old chart in here. I have an old chart of Amazon too. I don't know if I have it in here before that stock split. This was up here. This is early in the year. This is February. This gap down in earnings. This tanked, absolutely tanked. Talk about a good short. This closed up here the night before around 320 and changed. Opened down here in the morning run 240 something. So again, this was a gap down. What did we do? We shorted it. We shorted it. We got in, got out. Boom. Again, the red bar depicts what? Selling, shorting, and the price dropped. You could have bought it, put in it, which is an option. You could have shortened the day trade. We did that too. You even could have done a swing trade if you want to. Okay. It went down. Here's the volume. Okay. Again, this has changed now. The ticker symbol is meta. So anyways, I focus on shorts. Why? Because shorts move fast. Shorts move quick. And again, it gives me an edge because a lot of traders don't know how to short. 
a lot of people are going long. Again, they're already trying to go long every day, waiting and planning when to go long. So I'm looking for the footprints of institutional money, and then I'm going to short it. I'm looking to see what's happening. What are they doing? Are they buying? Are they selling? What's going on? Big traders, professional traders, hedge funds, they're the ones that move the market. They move the market up, they move the market down. They buy, they sell, they short too. You want to be with this side of the money, the big, big money, the power money, which is one of the reasons also that all the things that I trade have volume, momentum. You know the companies, you've heard of the companies. We're not doing low float stocks or little penny stocks or things don't have any volume. We're not going to make any money doing things like that. Or you have to take too much risk and too much size and that's too dangerous, okay? And any questions here as we're going along, let me know. But momentum is how you make money as an individual trader because you get a dollar, move, get out. You get $2, move, get out. Two and a half bucks, get out. A thousand shares, you get short it, drops $2. What do you make? $2,000, boom, you're done. Five minutes, 10 minutes. Also, moves to the downside, short moves happen quick. Why? Because of panic, 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 panic. What do you think is happening today? What do, you, what do you think happened from yesterday to last night? It was completely ridiculous that everyone was like, oh my God, it's, we're rallying, it's, this is the low. It's ridiculous that anyone would even conceive or even thought of going long yesterday. Okay, first of all, the Fed has lost all credibility. A month ago, they said they were gonna raise rates a half a point and no more. And then all of a sudden in the last two days, CNBC was talking about it since Monday, they were talking about raise, they may raise it points, a 75 basis points, and that's what they did. The market rallied that news, why? Again. You can't look in things and say, do, 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 and try to figure it out. You're never going to get in the head of anybody. Look at the price. Look at what's happening. The rally yesterday was absolutely pathetic. No strength, no stability, just bupkis. As soon as it rallied up, it just pittered off into the close. And while I did not know if we'd gap down today as much as we did, I wasn't surprised when I saw it. And then we went right after it, okay? And again, we are going into holiday weekend. We're closed, actually. The market's closed on Monday for Juneteenth. So we're going into a three-day weekend. The chances that anyone's going to go long and tomorrow is like next to none, okay? What's the footprint of institutional money? First of all, institutional money is big money that comes in. I'm using and describing the picture of a footprint so you understand it's a big move. That's the reason I'm saying footprint. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. How do I know it? I know it by reading the gap. Okay, I know it by reading the gap. How does the gap create it? The gap's created by buying or selling that happens in the post market or the pre market, which is when many institutional traders, big professional traders, take positions. The footprint is a picture. Forget the footprint if you don't like that analogy. I like to use pictures to describe things so people can understand it. It's big money that comes into the market and it buys or sells stocks or shorts them. Hedge funds can short stocks too, okay? But when I say big money, I mean huge positions and they move stocks. So you can't be against them because if you are, you will lose, all right? Uh, this was, again, a chart back here from April, okay? This closed here, this gap down. This was up here, like around 340 and change the night before the earnings and tanked. This was, again, Netflix, and this kaboomed just like Facebook did, actually. We did a short in this. We did a day trade short in this. You could do a put in this. It fell. And this is another example of a gap, okay? So again, talking about institutional money, what do they do here? Well, looks to me like they sold it or they shorted it too. How else are you going to get a stock to go from two? Well, let's go up here. How else are you going to get a stock from go to 340 down to 240 like that? This is four o'clock. This is 930. This isn't three weeks from now. Okay. Now, again, do I short every bearish gap down? Could this have flipped? Could this have gone up? Could the market have done that today? Could it have rallied? Could it have filled the gap? Yes, yes, it might have. It might have, it could have, it didn't. How did I know? I went through the process of my rating system to determine in the morning in the pre-market that in fact, it rated good enough too short, that in fact, it was not a long, okay? Because sometimes things reverse. You've seen that happen in the market. You've seen that happen in other stocks. 
KR actually this morning, I didn't see how that closed, but that reversed out of the gate this morning. That was a gap down in earnings from last night. Anyways, momentum is the way you're going to make money, no matter how you trade, whether it's options or whether it's stocks. But just talking here in general, if you're trading share quantity, share size, if you have a thousand shares of a stock or what would be 10 contracts is basically a thousand shares if you were doing options and you short it and it drops a dollar, how much will you make? A thousand dollars. Okay. If you have a thousand shares of a stock and you short it and it drops 10 cents, how much will you make? A hundred dollars. So which would you rather make? So obviously you'd rather make a thousand. So I don't scalp things where I'm doing things for 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents. I want momentum. I want to move. I want a big move. Again, going back to the philosophy and, and understanding of what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the institutional money because they will move it. They will move stocks up. They will move stocks down. Okay. So the philosophy behind shorting is I want fast moves, fast, quick moves where I'm in and I'm out. And again, it's panic. It's panic, panic, panic. So again, here is the spy. Close to your gap down, fell. And again, we did this today. So the key to day trading stocks successfully is really using a system. You have to trade a system that sets up daily with a high level of predictability in the directional move. You're not going to make money going long the market, for example, today. You would have lost or you would have scalped it and made very, very little. Trade a system that works independently of the market and does not need the market to work. Okay, that's, that's the other bugaboo. I think people are like in 2021, they were just lazy because they were doing all kinds of things, even stocks and downtrends that were super duper weak and they were going long them. And because the market was strong, they were making money. And so for one year, they thought they knew how to trade or what they were doing because everything they went long worked. That's not normal. Like I said, that was an anomaly. You have to look at it like you're saying, okay, this is going to work in any market condition, whether the market's bearish, whether the market's bullish, wherever we're going. Success or failure has a lot to do with the quality of your system. Again, a positive attitude is very important, but if you don't have a good system, you're not going to make money at all, period. It doesn't matter if you have good management, money management. It doesn't matter if you have $500,000 in your account. It doesn't matter if you have, you know, a, a positive attitude. If you don't have a good system, you're going to lose. Okay. So my niche again is shorting. And it's one of these things where I think people are struggling for years trying to figure out how to become successful. You have to go to different places and go through the process of finding something that clicks with you. Like if you're here today and you listen to something I say, you're like, yeah, I think this person, what she's saying, I can wrap my head around it. It makes sense. Or I think this might make sense. That's what you have to think about. You know, people go through when they start out trading and inevitably they lose because they don't know how to do it. You've got to learn from someone else to trade successfully or you have to create your own system. And that that's what I did. But I got to be honest, with you, it was a very, very expensive and long road for me. It was financially expensive and it was emotionally exhausting because I'm a strong person. I had the money to trade and figure my own system out. I did it. But, you know, it took me over three years and I never thought it would take that long. That is a path that you could take. You do not have to sign up for my class. You can create your own system, but it, you're going to need a lot of money and it's going to take years of your life. So it's a cheaper path to pay someone else to learn how to train. And you also get the benefit of having a mentor as well. So, you know, again, I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for the gap. Not all gaps are made with institutional money. This is one reason why people are often confused reading gap direction. And again, sometimes something gaps down and it reverses. It's not as short. It gets bought. It's not confusing to me because I have a method that I use to review it daily. I'm not trying to predict where the market's going to gap tomorrow morning. That's not my business. I just get up in the morning and see the gap. And then I will go through the process of reading it. And I will determine then if I am going to short it or if I'm going to go long or if I'm going to do nothing at all. Okay. So again, here's the chart of the market. We're going to go over some trades. But, you know, ultimately, I think people just misunderstand how to short it's very easy. If you don't know how to do it, you can call your broker, get your account set up to short. Retail traders and professional traders can both short. You can buy puts if you have an IRA and want to short because a put is a short too. And the concept of selling, the concept of shorting, again, it happens very quickly and fast. This protects you from having to worry about the afternoon moves where economic data is often announced. And again, the press conferences and all the things that wiggle and jiggle the market. 
If you're done trading every day by 10 o'clock in the morning, 10, 15, the latest, you're not going to have to worry about any of those things. And again, you short something, you get a dollar move, get a $2 move, get in, get out. That's it. Okay. And that's what we did today. And again, we were done a little bit after 10 o'clock, but you could have actually got out of the trade earlier today. I am going to show you the one minute chart. We do the trades on the one minute chart. I'm looking at the gap on the daily. I'm ready on the daily, but we do it on the one. So today, 616, we shorted the market. The entry was 3702. Shares was 1800. For an advanced trader risk, you could have taken 100. You could have taken half this. You could have taken whatever you want to take, whichever fits the requirement of your account. If you did not want to short this as an equity trade on margin, you could have bought a put today. You could have bought 370 puts. The exit was 367.78, and it was $4,032 with an 1800 share position. And we were in this and it made this money in a half an hour. Okay, so let's look at the one. Here was the trade. I stretched this out. Here's the gap. This is one minute chart. Stock close to your gap down, open, rally, boom. We got in it, got the short, got the drop out. It kept going. It kept going. It kept going further. I do not hold and always get the low of the day exits. That's not my job. My job is to make money and be done quick and fast. That's what I did. This did continue. I don't know where we closed exactly today at four, but I know it continued past where we got out today in the room. But we're in and out quick. So we did it here and we get the drop. It rallied up. I stayed with it. We got one more push boom, out. Done. So again, the selling pressure was on the market today. I look at technical analysis. I look at a chart. That's what chart reading is. What is technical analysis? I'm looking at past price data to predict future price data. I do not look at fundamental stuff. I have to know what's going on with fundamentals to talk on television, though. So very often, the fundamentals do coincide with the price action. But I got to be honest with you. Last year was so bullish. And the backdrop of the fundamentals really wasn't there to be honest with you. So there were many signs that we were leading into an inflationary period. If you're a consumer, you knew that shopping last year, even in the last six months of 2021, uh, and the market was reacting so bullish to every single thing that was happening, it really didn't make any sense. So that's why, again, you really can't just say, well, I'm going to look at the fundamentals and make trading decisions. You know, this is a good company. I want to buy it. Okay, if you can be in it, for 20 years or 10 years or whatever, it may go back up to the high, but you may suffer and sweat another downtrend or sell-off till God knows where before it even goes back up there, okay? Because many stocks do tend to go with the market when it's having big gyrated moves. So having a niche and a focus really counts and you have to focus on the good ones. Today, we had two good ones and we could have done more. We could have done more things today, but I typically do one thing a day. I just said, let's do them both and we did. This closed here, this gap down, this was the overall market, this was the QQQs. Again, we did do this Monday too. So we did it Monday. This is a gap down here. This was Friday into Monday, boom. Okay. So this is the daily. Again, you could have bought a put. You could have bought the 275 puts. Okay, I did call two puts today in the market. Advanced trader risk, 1800 shares, risk 360. Shorted at 274.90, boom. Exit 272.95. You could have made $3,510. And this was, again, a fast trade. We got out of both of them a little bit after 10 o'clock. Here's the one minute. Got the short, boom. Got the drop, got out. This kept going all the way down in here. If you wanted to hold it to 11 o'clock, came all the way down to 271-ish. So you definitely could have held it even more. Again, the goal for me is to get the good pick in the good direction, to get a move, to make the money and get out. So we're looking to turn it over one. So if you risk 2,000, you're looking to make 2,000. If you risk 3,000, you're looking to make 3,000. If you're doing an option, same thing. And to be honest, I think 50% is a good return on investment option. I had a couple of people email me today. They got out of the trades I called today. They made 50%. They were happy they were done. If they keep going, it doesn't matter. They made 50%. They were happy they booked the profits. Every time you book money in a trade, then you have money to take another trade and another trade and another trade. And booking money again is important. Remember what I said, we're chunking it out. Any questions here? Just want to look at my time. So again, short moves happen fast. Why? Panic. Panic, 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 panic. You could say because of rates going up. You could say fears of recession. You could say whatever you want to say. The fact is that they happen quickly because selling comes in quickly. Nobody's thinking Thinking, 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 thinking when they're afraid, when they're panicking. 
It's not like you're like, well, maybe I'll go long Apple. It's there's no emergency. Well, maybe I'll go long. Well, maybe I'll go long tomorrow. Well, maybe I'll do it next week. There's no emergency. Okay. And when something's falling, there is an emergency. If you're in it, if you're in it already and you happen to be down or you are up and you're not up as much as you were before because it's moving down. You understand? So short moves happen fast because of panic. Panic is fear. We've seen nonstop panic in the market since the beginning of the year. I mean, it's really been fear. Fear creates selling. And again, this is what creates selling. We do do gaps on earnings and we do do news gaps. Like today we did the market. Again, I'll look at Adobe tonight, tomorrow morning. Adobe is an earnings gap. So we do gaps for different reasons. Right now it's not earnings season. We're at the tail end of earnings season. So I'm not going to not trade unless there's unless there's earnings. No, I will trade gaps on news. I will trade gaps for many reasons. I do look at earnings gaps too. Again, I'll look at any gap as long as it rates good. Are most of our gaps in a calendar year of 12 months of year earnings gaps? Uh, I don't even know because in between times we do things like the market or things with the market. It could be even 50-50. So... You know, there, it's not earning season every day is the point. And we, we don't go weeks without trading. So that's, we get more gaps, more gaps in earning season. And they have bigger moves. We did Walmart. That was crazy. We did Target. That was another earnings gap. So I guess the best way to describe the benefit of earning season is you get big moves, bigger moves than you would normally get. And you get more trades. You get more trades. Uh, let me just ask here. I time my eggs by watching it live and looking at the targets. As far as options, if you can't watch because you're busy or doing whatever, you can just put a sell order. It's a cancel day order. It's a limit order and it can sell you out if you can't watch it. Put a sell order of 50% if you can't watch it for the target. I do put targets in the gap options newsletter, but I like to watch stock live. If you can't, if you're doing other things, then you just put a sell order. So that has to do with your schedule. Do I ever short these small bio stocks that gap up 80% in the morning and spend the rest of the day fading away? No. No. So how do I find the best shorts daily? And how do I make the picks? I look at a rating system. I get up in the morning, I rate the gap. I rated the market this morning. It rated good. That's why I said no chance of failure. And we did it. It was a 20 pick six point rating system that I created a very long time ago. I haven't changed anything for a number of years. If I could come up with something that was 126 points that I'd never lose, that would be great. But I really haven't added any points since I created the system, which took me three years. The more things that you can look at to give you an edge to say that this is going to work, the better off you're going to be. Trading is about the odds. You know, nothing's 100%. It's you want the odds in your favor. And that's why I was talking about trading with institutional money. The odds are in your favor if you're trading with institutional money. So the gaps I do are, are, are follow the large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. So I call them golden gaps. You could call them professional gaps. They happen to play out in stocks that are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction, correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. The spy, okay, yesterday is a good example. Many day traders went long. Okay. You saw the pop up in the market yesterday. We, we were short since Monday. So who was right? The people that made the money, which was obviously today. You've got to be right more than you're wrong. So the checklist helps me be right more than wrong. It helps me get more winners than losers. And actually a lot of it is based on common sense. I'm just talking the basics about this here, but talking about selling, talking about panic. I mean, you can wrap your head around that. Shorting gives me a niche because people get scared. They get scared, they get scared and then they sell. They sell first, think, think about it later. You know, people, some people might regret selling some of their positions here with this market, the way we've been this year, but they don't think, okay. I do go long. I will go long. I will call calls. I've called calls before. We've done calls in the market. We did calls in the market last year on the options letter, and we've gone long the market as well. Right now, that's not what we're doing. 
So when, when I will see that is whenever I see it again, it's like, it's like, you're telling me, okay, when am I going to see the next rainbow out my window? I have no idea. It's like, I'm not, I can't even think about that right now. Like trading is about opportunity. You take advantage of the opportunity when it's there. If it's there to short, you're shorting. If it's there to go long, you're going long. So if the market flips and turns, I'm probably still going to be doing the fast, quick day trades to the downside, like I always do. But I'll probably be doing calls on the options newsletter when that occurs, whenever it occurs, which is not right now. Okay. So what if you have a small account? Can you still short? Someone was asking about retirement accounts. The answer is yes. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. You shouldn't risk $2,000 a train. You shouldn't risk even $1,000 a trade with a $2,000 account. You have to divide it up bit by bit. Grow a $2,000 account up to five. Grow a five account up to 10. People are doing that with me. Again, the guy that, that took this buy trade today and got out with 50% as a small account, he's in, he's in one other thing or two other things still. But you have to chunk it. You have to chunk it out. You can start with a small account, though, and grow it. And a put option, as I said earlier, is a short all right, you have to check with your broker, have to check where you have your IRA, have to look into the information. Again, I'm not a broker. But the advantage of trading gaps as options is you get the overnight moves and you get the overnight moves with a fixed risk. If you're in something shorting as a swing trade or even going long as a swing trade, you basically have unlimited risk. You're on either cash or two to one margin with the broker. But either way, even if you're on all cash, you could be totally upside down and nobody wants to be upside down. Uh, and that's what's happening. That's what's happening right now, people. Anyways, the nice thing about options is you have a fixed risk. You can't lose any more than your risk. If you risk $2,000, that's all you can lose, even if the trade goes against you. All right. Now, what people get concerned with options is timing. Well, that's where my rating system helps with the timing. Because in an option, if you get the momentum and the direction right in your, in your move and it goes in your favor, that's where you get the profit. That's where you get the money. So that's, again, where the rating system helps me make the option picks. Okay, I'm seeing the momentum is going to come in at XYZ date or whatever day that we do it. So I'm doing them pretty tight. I'm doing them weeklies. This was, this was a great call. This was just a great call. Last Thursday, I called the 409 spies. 409! So this was 575 was the cost. 15 contracts was 86.25, sold at 36. Profit was 45,375. It was a 526% return on investment. And the beginner risk was 6,000 on 11.50. So I'm just quickly looking here at the time. I'm just going to fast forward here. I, I know I asked, asked some questions, answered some questions. If anyone's interested in my class, it's $69.99, June 25th and 26th. Father's Day weekend is this weekend. I'm doing a Father's Day special. Um, you, if you want to sign up for the class next weekend, you can sign up by Father's Day Sunday. And I'm giving the options newsletter and the trading room free through Labor Day, which is a nice special. The class is the 25th and 26th. I just, I just saw. Thank you. Did I go over? <laughs> Any quick questions here? Yeah, email me if you have any questions. Just feel free to email me. And again, if you want to try with the trading room, you can email me too. Thanks so much for having me. Sorry if I went over. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. I'm sure um, John is going to hop back on here. I'm always listening. Uh, no word escapes me. <laughs> 